Dubuque is the site of many firsts for the state of Iowa. It's the first city in Iowa, first official settlement, and the site of the state's first industrial boom. In 1833, when U.S. citizens were first allowed to settle the area, lead mining fever had struck. And it wasn't really until Julian Dubuque, um, who of course is our namesake, who was really the first permanent European settler here. And he was given permission to operate the mines here from the tribes. And he did so pretty much until 1810. With the lead mine rush leading the way in the 1830s, the population of Dubuque quickly ballooned into the thousands. One of the early lead mine settlers was Matthias Ham, a southerner hungry to make his fortune from Dubuque lead. Matthias Ham, he was one of the earliest settlers here in Dubuque. He came over and he just thought the area was absolutely gorgeous. It was the perfect opportunity for him to open up a few different kinds of businesses. And he stayed and settled here. Like everyone else, Ham and his then girlfriend Zerelda lived in a log cabin. However, eventually they married and Zerelda wanted to raise their family in the comfort of a house. It started off with the smaller portion where our current gift shop is located, and then they added on the, the larger portion of the house. Um, unfortunately, she only maybe lived about two years in the house before she passed away. So the house was never really completed um, until around 1857. So it took almost 10 years for the house to be fully completed. Altogether, the Matthias Ham House is three stories with a basement, featuring 16 rooms, 14-foot decorated ceilings, two kitchens, a side porch, and a cupola on top. The structure is known as an Italian villa in the Italianate style. At this particular moment when this house was being built, that was actually the new style. It was all about nature and fitting within nature. Um, it actually came out of a larger movement called the picturesque movement. And it was all about organic forms and sitting back into the landscape. So with the stone walls and like very soft architecture with it. The style was also very practical for the times. Instead of curtains, each window has shutters to block out light or allow in fresh air, a decoration that serves a purpose. The same goes for the cupola, which offers an escape for rising hot air at the very center of the house. We don't have a lot of photos from Matthias Ham himself and his family, so we do go off of you know, other stories and other images of what houses of that era would have looked like. And they were very big on hosting parties here. And so there would be lots of birthdays, um, weddings, et cetera, things like that here. And the dining room would have been where they would have hosted everything. The first floor features a winter kitchen, a dining room, and formal sitting room. Across the hall is the library and common parlor where visitors can enjoy a drink, a cigar, or conversation. One of the unique period pieces in the house is a special collection of parlor furniture. And it's called a conversation chair. And it is a round chair that has three seats all connected. It was a way that you could have a com private conversation. Or if you were currently courting someone, you would have a chaperone with you and they would monitor the conversation, you know, to make sure it was all, you know, G-rated. While the first floor was for entertaining, the second floor was the living area, where visitors might be taken aback by the sheer size of each room. So the bedrooms upstairs are pretty typical for the era, um, but that also means most people think they're quite large today. And the reason for that is they didn't have closets. And it's pretty much because they didn't have as many clothes as we did today. They didn't need that space, so they had wardrobes, they had dressers, and those particular pieces of the furniture were quite large, and so they needed to take up space. Also, today, most people have, you know, it's one to a room, right? You don't really share a room. Not necessarily back then. Back then, it would have been all the girls sharing a room, the boys sharing a room. Often it was, you know, four kids in one room, sometimes two to a bed. Much of the Ham House is indicative of the era and, of course, the Iowa climate. Nearly every room has a ceiling 10 feet or higher, enough space for the heat to be above the house residence. The easily opened and closed windows help manage light and heat. As far as era fashion goes, that is easily apparent in all the color. 
So unlike today where everything is monochromatic, where every, there's a, a theme that goes through each room of the house, that was not the case. Each room could have a completely different vibe, a completely different theme. One room would be the blue room. Another room could be the jungle room. There could be a room that looked like marble. It could be marbled wallpaper, a marbled rug, everything like that. Just as Matthias completed the construction of the house in 1857, a national economic crisis hit, and the Ham family lost virtually its entire fortune. Matthias worked the rest of his life to keep the family in the home and willed it to his daughter, Sarah Ham, upon his passing. In 1911, Sarah Ham sold the house to the city of Dubuque, where it took another 50 years before it was converted into a museum. Today, the Matthias Ham Historic Site is a regular summer tourist attraction for visitors to the area. For history-hungry travelers, Dubuque collected three historic buildings on the Ham property. The Arundo Log Cabin, believed to be the oldest log cabin still standing in the state, and the Humkey One-Room Schoolhouse, a treasure from 1883. While the school, cabin, and Ham House are not necessarily linked through history, they do paint a picture of early Dubuque. Each building tells a portion of Iowa history from the very beginning to modern day. And it allows us to also tell the progression and do the you know, comparisons that really helps people to understand, you know, not only the differences between you know, the decades or the centuries, um, but also between modern day life. While Iowa was first being settled, Matthias Ham was a very successful person, but not necessarily a very impactful person on the history of Iowa. However, his family's home provides a necessary perspective on Dubuque and much more. It's just a stopping point in our history that continually reminds us of where we've been and where we're going. Because this house, while Matthias Ham did build it and he lived in here, the house doesn't just tell the story of Matthias Ham. It tells the story of how Iowa started. It tells the story of the history of the region um, and westward settlement. It's the center for our story at, of Dubuque. That's what it is. It is the center of our story as a town, as a city, as a county.